I hope you've developed a thick skin and a high threshold for disgusting things, because this movie gets nasty. We open on the Panthers cheer squad working through a rehearsal. It's a new routine, but they're getting it. And soon, so will be Michael, freshly done getting dirty, rolling around with the boys, and now giving his time to his girl, Tammy. They meet up with their friend Byron along the way, and he is just too much, as demonstrated by their faces. Despite the good times, Tammy feels she has no choice but to give back back Michael's rose of intent, because dating anyone is just too dangerous so long as her abusive ex Billy is still stalking her. So he symbolically eats the rose and invites her to a party later, even though the circumstances remain unchanged. However, we don't actually have to wait at all, because Billy arrives right then and starts up, as he's prone to do, in an attempt to win Tammy's affection. Is it working? Ah! Come on, man! After your boys pull a loopsie doo and a couple of clotheslines, Billy steals the peaches. And he lingers on it for so long that when the police arrive, they have to attempt to disentangle the boys from what has turned into an extended, forced, reversed docking technique of sorts. After all is said and done, Michael kind of liked it. But Tammy finds violence abhorrent and storms off in disgust. Even so, Byron encourages Michael to never give up. We then meet up with Dr. Walkenstein, observing a test run of his new animatronic dinosaur. They find it to be more powerful than any other dinosaur in existence. But its mobility is limited to the platform. The doctor lusts to give it a brain so it may have a life of its own and become autonomous, freeing it from its prison of mechanical limitation. Later on, Michael is pining away in his bedroom when Tammy calls him. She feels bad about running away and agrees to work on being more accepting of his violent nature. The reconciliation starts with an invitation to her room. Michael gathers up his Timbos and gives his lucky fish skin a little kiss before heading over. He rolls up and takes the trellis to her window, but is observed by a couple of Billy's friends who have happen to be driving by. Inside, they trash her room, prompting a call upstairs from her dad, downstairs. Lucky for them, he's not interested in coming to check on her, so they can get right to making themselves comfortable. But Billy is Johnny on the spot when it comes to cock blocking, and he and the crew are soon banging up the stairs to confront his ex-girlfriend's new lover. When he gets there, Michael has already slipped out, but he vows revenge. He doesn't have to wait long as Michael has only made it out to the driveway, and ends up having to run down the road to try to escape. He's pretty quick out in the open, but he turns turns off into a secluded park so he can take his beating without public embarrassment. Once they get him on his back, he concedes immediately, so the gang stuffs him into the trunk so they can take even more revenge on him at a second location. This time, they do it at a more private park that's also sort of like an open zoo. But after all that effort, Billy's feeling a bit peckish, so they vote to grab a sack of sliders and leave Michael here without further warning. Not that it would help anyway, as he soon finds out the deal with his nature preserve and also discovers that there isn't an inch of it that isn't already occupied occupied by large jungle cats. The game warden does manage to drive up before he's completely consumed, but not before his pectorals are stripped from his ribcage. The next day, his friends find him in the ICU. What did he do to you? What the Looks like nothing. Why? Tammy blames herself for what happened, rightly. Then Billy shows up yet again, and as much as he loves Tammy, he also vows to kill her at some point in the future, but not right now. Dr. Ockenstein then arrives at the hospital, having been called in for a consultation. He checks in on the patient and positively salivates when hearing about how Michael has no real family, making him a prime candidate for the doctor's testing. So he distracts them while Helga fakes a flatline, providing them the chance to pretend to administer life-saving procedures that fail. Then they quickly use the distraction of his untimely death to cart him out of the facility under cover of mourning. They get his body back to their warehouse where they have a fun little lab set up for their surgeries. Helga prepares him with a simple caress, and the good doctor then nonchalantly and with very little fanfare gets in there and cracks his skull open. As it turns out, our heads are very much like a kinder egg, with the brain just kind of hanging out inside like a little prize. From this point, it's just a matter of plugging the brain into the neurotronic punch bowl to preserve it, as they connect each of the bodily extremities to the corresponding control portion of the gray matter, since that's exactly how brains work. Satisfied with his progress, the doctor leaves the men to clean up, intending to get some rest and complete the final lobotomization in the morning, a fine way to start any day. With the boss gone, the boys order some deep dish to keep their spirits up. The delivery driver lets himself in, but his inherent yumminess awakens something inside Michael, causing him to prematurely animate. This scores the henchmen some free za, which they don't question at all. As they go about their work, Michael grows increasingly distressed about how disrespectfully they treat his beautiful corpse. He works himself into a frenzy before little Bobby takes him to Flavortown, which is bad for Bobby. Michael then suffers a momentary existential crisis 
before Carl walks in to give him something else to focus on. He takes him out behind the shed and shows Carl how valuable a black belt is when your opponent is a dinosaur. Afterward, he gives Tammy a quick ring on the phone, but she's not there, so he has to leave her a message. Across town, the young greasers are busy rocking out like there's no tomorrow. Except for Tammy, she's trying to party through her grief, but it's not working too well. You'll be okay. Aw, thanks, B. And then what happens? Billy the Butthole shows up, which is in very poor taste considering the recent murder he perpetrated. But damn it, Billy loves to dance. So after he and Tammy do that hot, cold thing they've got going on, he leaves with Michelle. Just outside the dance floor, Weasel takes a moment to relieve himself and ends up tickling between Michael's toes. Always one to reciprocate in a tickle sesh, Michael hits him back in his small intestine. Then he lumbers off to where Billy's at, but Billy's too preoccupied with seeking out affirmations to notice. I'm good, right? I'm good, right? Until Michael dips in to pull a drumstick off his car date. He then takes off, running through the crowd screaming, and the revelers scatter before him. If only he didn't stop to ensure that everyone in this cabana was properly warned, he might still be alive. Michael then squashes some bros on his way to help out Byron, picking him up and dusting him off, but incapable of communicating further. Since murder is a lower priority than schoolyard fights, the police show up only after the party is concluded. What they find are guts all over, and only two survivors on site. However, all they can do is stutter out vague statements about a dinosaur on the loose. But their story is corroborated by Byron, who circled back to share his testimony of the events with his father, the sheriff, who remains incredulous. The next day at the lair, our antagonists regard their flattened co-workers with a whimsical curiosity. The doctor takes this as an encouraging turn of events, pointing out how unique and successful they must be to have created an autonomous robotic dinosaur that's so full of murderous passion. I mean, just think of the possibilities. Meanwhile, at Tammy's house, we find her drying off after already donning her evening negligee. She prepares for bed while Michael stares wistfully through the window, but when she sees him, she screams and faints. Her father finally decides that this is worth checking in on, but when he arrives, he finds that she's already left for the day. Michael has taken her, we learn, to their favorite barn for making out. Here, he tries to find some way to communicate with her. He sticks with it through the frustration, and after a simple game of charades, he's able to get her to guess that her lover's brain has been transplanted into the robot dinosaur standing before her now. You have Michael's brain? Since that's the most important part, and she's not superficial, the relationship is back on. Meanwhile, back at her house, the police are just starting to come to terms with the fact that they're conducting a dinosaur investigation, when Tammy strolls back up and plays like she was just taking a walk. The first chance she gets, she pulls Byron aside to tell him the good news, despite how crazy it sounds, and he is very encouraging. Their plan now is to think up a way to get Michael back in his body. A perfect opportunity arises at the funeral, where they try to hold in their laughter at all these idiots mourning for no reason. As everyone leaves afterward, we see Helga and the doctor lurking nearby, keeping a close eye on things and delighting in the possibilities surrounding their new industry of putting brains in robots. The kids dig up the coffin, but when Tammy hops in to do the business, they find that he wasn't properly preserved. The doctor tries to step in here and take the kids hostage to entice Michael back into their custody. But the kids pull a reverse card, taking the doctor hostage so they can use him to complete the surgery they're going to need to have done once they find a reasonable body replacement. So the next stop is the morgue, where they come to the realization that most dead people are going to be a bit too old. Disagreeing about other key aspects, they decide Michael should get some say in this, so they parade the corpses in front of the window to get his vote. They end up running out of bodies, but it doesn't matter, because the hostages escape right as the police cruiser rolls up. So now, they got a fled, as would be suggested by Stephen Baldwin. The police try to convince Byron to pull over, but he won't listen to reason, so they call his daddy. The sheriff does eventually cut into the chase, but Byron still gets a good lead on them, which is squandered when they lose the back of the truck. In a last-ditch effort, Byron goes to cover their escape by flagging down the police to stall them. It works, as Sheriff Black rolls up only in time to take in the breathtaking majesty of the Dino Rider. How did they do that? The next day, the police follow Byron in his bicycling uniform to their secret hideout, where Michael's been ridden hard and put away wet. As they enjoy their sandwiches and plan for the future, we learn they still want to get their hands on the doctor, so he can help them reverse the transplant. When the police pull up, they emerge waving the white flag of negotiation, but the cops grab them, enraging Michael. Before they can complete the arrest, the doctor then shows up to file a property rights dispute. Through the mystery of technical jargon, he's able to convince the police of his need to tranquilize his robot 
robot to safely remove him from the premise, which they allow him to undertake. Despite going in fully prepared for a dino fight, he and Helga seem surprised and frozen in fear when he slowly leers over them and aerates the doctor's torso. Now the police have no choice but to open fire, putting him down and then letting Tammy have her way with the corpse as a consolation. Despite this, we see her coming home sometime later as if floating on a cloud. We learn that she's been taking care of her boo while waiting for a new body to become available. In the meantime, they get by best way they know how, with a little bourbon and a daily afternoon striptease that is so erotic it results in a neural explosion. If that wasn't too much for you, be sure to check out this video next. Now that we're here, I want to congratulate you for making it to the end of the video and affirm that you are a very special person because of it. And if you enjoyed the video, I would love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.